All right, so we're on four, three, six now. This is where some of the things start to get a little bit more complicated. Uh, so we're starting to combine a few different things, but write a program that reports whether or not someone is old enough to vote in the US. You should do the following in your program. Ask the user for their age, store it in variable. Okay, so that's gonna be our input uh, function. Remember that one. Use an if else statement with the proper comparison operator to print you are old enough to vote. If the person's age is at least 18 and you are not old enough to vote otherwise, okay? An example of your program might look like this, age 19, you are old enough to vote, or like this, age 16, you are not old enough to vote. Okay, that's not too bad. So we're gonna set age equals input of uh, what is your age, like that. And remember, we're doing that to gather info from the user, right? So we're gonna add, be able to put in some value right there, okay? And then if, age is greater than or equal to, I forget if it's that way or the other way around, we'll have to see. Um, 18, print, you are old enough to vote. And then we're gonna say else, print, you are not old enough to vote. So there we go. I mean, that, that one's simple, let's see if it works. Um, 25. Okay, so that's the wrong operator. So we'll say it's like that. I forget what it is. What's the syntax for this? Let's look it up. So this is what you got to do if you're ever forgetting something. Yeah, it's greater than than equals. Did I mess that up? Yeah, I thought I did that before. Oh, it's because this isn't an int, duh, int input. Duh, you can't do math with it with a string. Duh, Mr. Burke. Okay, so let's run this one again. 25, there we go, we're old enough to vote. Okay, so the issue that we were having before, remember, is we had it like this, and I should have read the error. It would have told me why it didn't work. Right, so not, not uh, greater than equal not supported between instances of string and int. So yeah, I should have read the error. It would have told me what was wrong. Um, but in that case, you need to convert this value to an int. Remember, you can do it like that, or you could do it uh, like this, age equals int age. Either one works, um, and that is going to solve the problem. So let's move on to the next one. Positive, zero, or negative. Write a program that asks the user for a number. Report whether that number is positive, zero, or negative. An example interaction might look like this. Negative three, that number is negative, or? Okay. All right, so we're gonna be using some elif statements, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure if they've taught us about those, but we're, we're gonna use one. So, uh, duh, duh, duh. so num equals input enter a number and we're going to want to convert that to an integer remember don't forget this time mr burke we're going to do that num equals int num okay if num is greater than zero print uh that number is positive okay elif num equals equals zero we're going to print that number is zero. And then we know that since this encompasses all numbers so far, except for negative numbers, that we can just use an else statement to uh, sort of encompass the rest, right? Because we have all of the positive numbers, we have zero, and that just leaves all of the negative numbers. So we're gonna say else print that number is negative. Let's go ahead and give that a try. See if I screwed anything up, which is totally possible. I am certainly not perfect. Great, so that number is positive. Let's make this look a little bit nicer. Check the code. Perfect, we're ready to move on to the next exercise. Awesome. So let's see, what do we got next? Oh, I think this next one's an example. Age group. Uh, so this is a number of elif statements okay great so let's move this one table reservation write a program that asks the user for their name using input it should have another string variable that represents the name on a particular table 
reservation in a restaurant, stored in a variable called reservation name. Program should print right this way if the username matches the name on the reservation. Sorry, we don't have a reservation under that name otherwise. Okay, that's easy enough. So we'll say, uh, we'll say reservation name. We'll do this one first. Reservation name equals some value, right? What does it want us to save it as? Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't care. Okay, so I'll just write Mr. Burke. Um, all right, so reservation name equals Mr. Burke. Name equals input. Uh, what is your name? Something like that. Okay, and if name equals equals uh, reservation name, then we are going to print write this way. Okay, else we are going to print, sorry, we don't have a reservation under that name. Okay, so let's see if this works. Run the code. Let's see, let's type in uh, John. Sorry, we don't have a reservation under that name. So John, sorry, you're out of luck. Mr. Burke, write this way. So there we go, let's check it out. And let's run through this to see what happened just because this one's a little bit trickier than some of the other ones. So reservation name, this is our constant, right? And we're setting this to whatever people have reservations. In this case, I simply did my own name just for this problem. So Mr. Burke is the name of the reservation name. Then we are having the user input what their name actually is. So the, the console asks for a name they say input, what is your name? You have to input something. If the name equals the reservation name, remember when you're checking if something is equal to something else, you use two equals signs, okay? So equals equals reservation name, colon, right? Because we need to make sure we have our proper syntax. Print right this way. Else, remember your colon again. Print sorry, we don't have a reservation under that name. So let's move on to the next one. I think this is the last one here. Oh boy, that's a lot of words. Okay, you've been hired to help a bank automate their deposit slash withdrawal system. Your task is to write a Python program that interacts with the customer in order to process a deposit or withdrawal. Assume the customer has an initial balance of 1,000. Just store that number in a variable. Then ask the user two things, whether they want to make a deposit or a withdrawal. For this step, they should de type deposit or withdrawal on what they want to do. It needs to be the exact spelling, including capitalization. Okay, how much money do they want to deposit or withdraw? Okay, then your program should include an if elif else statement to do the following. If the customer is making deposit, add the amount. If the customer is making withdrawal, subtract the amount. Otherwise, print invalid transaction. Okay, in this case, if the customer's final balance is just the same, or in this case, the customer's final balance is just the same as their initial balance. Okay, finally, your program should use an if else statement to do the following. If the customer's final balance would be negative, tell them you cannot have a negative balance. Otherwise, report their final balance. Okie doke. So this one's definitely a little bit complicated. So let's try to work it out. All right. Um, so first thing that we need to do, assume the customer has an initial balance of 1,000. So we'll say balance equals 1,000. Okay. And then ask the user two things. So. Uh, we'll say action equals uh, input deposit slash withdrawal. So this will ask them if they want to do a deposit or a withdrawal. Uh, and then we can use this little thing if we want to, um, to standardize things, which will be useful later. But let's see. So action equals input deposit or withdrawal. And then let's see. Okay, amount equals input, um, how much money, or how much I'll just say, how much. Okay, then if action equals equals input, or sorry, act, what am I doing? If action equals equals deposit, okay, there we go. Um, we're going to say balance 
plus equals uh, amount. Oh, and we need to convert that to an int or a float if we really want to. And do either one. So we're going to say there. So if action equals deposit, balance plus equals amount. Okay. Elif. Alright, action equals equals withdrawal. Withdrawal. You're going to do balance minus equals amount, which is going to subtract an amount from our balance. Okay, and then we want to say else, it is going to be an invalid transaction. So else print invalid transaction. Okay, and then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna say if balance is less than zero, we are going to print you cannot have a negative balance. Balance equals 1,000. We're going to reset their balance back to 1,000 because uh, it can't go less than zero. And then we are going to report the final balance. So um, else print balance. So there we go. Let's run this through, sort of see what's going on. Let's try it out one time real quick. Deposit or withdrawal. Deposit. How much? 1500 2500 Okay, great. We'll say withdrawal. And we'll do two grand. You cannot have a negative balance. Okay, let's check the code. It wants us to... Okay. Uh, it, oh, it wants withdrawal as a lowercase. All right. So it wants like very specific spelling. Really? What is going on? Why is this not working? Because it does work. Uh, oh, action equals deposit. We need to fix that too. All right. Now let's check the code. There we go. So we're good. So that's one thing about these auto graders is that sometimes you got to be really specific about like the capitalization and the, and the punctuation and stuff like that. Um, so make sure you're checking that out if you're having issues. Now, to explain what's actually going on here, because uh, that is important to do. I am a teacher after all. So the first thing that it asked us to do was to set our balance equal to a thousand. So that is how much that a person has deposited in their bank account. Okay, this could be whatever it, end, whatever it needs to be, right? Um, and then what we want to do is we're going to say action. So this is what we're asking the person to do. We can name this whatever we want. We can name it X. We can name it Y. We can name it Q. It doesn't matter. But I named it action in this case. And I'm setting that equal to whatever the user inputs. Okay, so they're either going to input deposit or withdrawal. Okay. And so that's what I'm asking them to input by putting this sort of slash mark here. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is we want to ask them how much they want to deposit or withdraw. So we're going to say amount equals input how much. And the thing that you're going to run into if you don't, if you do it like this, is that you still need to convert it to an int. So we convert this whole thing to an integer. So we'll be able to do some math with it in a second. So this whole line is amount equals int output how much. Okay, and that converts that to an integer. And then we get into the logic of this problem. So if action equals equals deposit. So if this equals equals deposit, we are going to add an amount. We're going to add this amount to our balance. So if we put in deposit and then we put in 50, so if action equals deposit, balance is going to go up by 50. It's going to be plus equal 50. So it's going to be 1050. Elif, so that's going to be elif. So it's going to be a secondary if statement, essentially. Action equals equals withdrawal, meaning if we choose withdrawal, then balance is going to subtract from the amount. 
okay? Or it's going to subtract the amount. So balance minus equals amount. Else, it is going to be an invalid transaction and the person will have to try again. And the last thing we need to add is if balance is less than zero, print you cannot have a negative balance. Okay, so if balance is less than zero, print you can't have a negative balance. And then we need to reset the balance back to a thousand. Okay, so they, we can't let them withdraw more than what they have. No overdraft fees here. So we're going to set the balance back to a thousand and else. So if it's greater than zero after the withdrawal, then you're just going to print balance. So there you go. That's that one. That is all of 4.3. Hopefully they weren't too confusing. Some of this sort of conditional logic stuff can be a little bit confusing when you first start it, but the more you practice, the more the better you'll get. So hopefully this wasn't too hard and you'll be able to stick with it and keep it up.